Glory, hallelujah. Glory to the King. Glory, glory, glory. Yah is good. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Grace and peace be lost. All of you who are called to be saints, blessings to you all. Hallelujah. In the name of the, uh, our Master, um, our Father, Yahweh Elohim, and the Son, Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ. Shalom and blessings to you all. And glory to the King. Thank you, your host for the evening, all the time here on the Street Ministry Radio Broadcast on Blog Talk Radio. Will be always contend for a state. Contend and be always warring and fighting. Just to keep, you know, that which is dear and near to us. The faith that has given us to our forefathers, that has given us to our Abraham, Isaac, and Isaac. You know, as a promise, the covenant has given us to our faith. We are a blessed people. We are a royal people. We are holy people. Glory to the King. And thank you for this honor to be here before you this evening. All praise and all honor goes to the Father. In the name of Jesus. So thank you for um, all that he's done. All that he's done. Hallelujah. And it's an honor for me to be here before you. I'm just so grateful and I'm thankful. And I really see the name. My heart is inviting you in a good matter, hallelujah, and I'm encouraged, and I hope you all are encouraged as well. Some of you are honest, God, we love pastor, pastor, sorry, God, and, and just, I can't say enough about him, and, and just continue to pray for him, and God do the same, uh, because he does so much, he gives so much, I can tell for us all, and helping us. As we progress, as we move forward, we'll listen to you. As well as the other pastors, as well as the other chief, Pastor Fox, Pastor Taylor, as well as Pastor Corey, blessings into you all. Keep it nice. And all the elders here in Israel, I'm going to tell you something. All you, my brothers and sisters who are listening in tonight, this evening. I don't think you realize you know, how fortunate, how blessed of a people we are. I don't think you really grasp and understand the great level of mercy. You know, that Yahweh, you know, he, he's really dealing with us in this last hour, in this, in this late hour. He's dealing with us, man. And it's all for you know, our perception. It's all for us to, you know, be, be preserved and plain and spotless and be, you know, ready when, when, when the sewer comes. Man, I think when I think about it, you know, I just go down and just, man, just to get myself here to this evening. I'm just so grateful that things I really see them in. I see the Father doing. And I hope that you all are, 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 are that you talk to him, that you get me, that you really are striving, that you really are making effort to change your spiritual existence and that you're not satisfied and comfortable where you are. This thing is very serious. This war is real. And Satan is real. He's playing to teach and he's playing hard balls. We better be serious. We better get about our business, our father's business. We better be calm. We better become warriors. We better become soldiers. We better start fighting. Seriously, we better get it together. We're to the team. That's how I always like to start to show off, then. Glory to the team. Here we go again. Give me one second, thank you, like I'm having your issues with the mic. Yet again, just keep playing, thanks. I've done I'm nothing, I've done nothing different. Uh, uh, nothing much of a statement that I've never lied, thanks. But 
Brother Ugly, Brother Kyrie, Brother Steve, this is one. Once I give me a, uh, another mic set, I see a first is coming in with 10, 10, and then he drops. Natural disaster, civil unrest, economic collapse. Don't depend on grocery stores or government handouts. Pastor Dow urges you to stock up on Numana food storage. Numana is swine-free, GMO-free, has no high fructose corn syrup or artificial flavors. Numana's tasty meals are individually wrapped. Potato cheese casserole, pasta primavera, sweet habanero chili, mac and cheese, and many more secured in a reusable bucket with a shelf life of 25 years. Numana's wholesome food storage will help you thrive no matter what. Just add boiling water and you'll have a delicious meal in minutes. Pastor Dow and Straightway Truth offer Numana food storage at a very reasonable price. Click on the Numana link at straightwaytruth.com. That's S-T-R-A-I-T, waytruth.com, or call 615-688-3025. 615-688-3025. Order Numana for your food security today. All right, thanks. Uh, of course, that that was clear. That came in clear. <clears throat> Let me know how my voice is coming in. You get a sound check. Sound check one two one two. Oh, one, two, 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 two. Yeah, hallelujah. We're gonna pull, huh? Thank y'all, thanks for your uh, uh, participation, for your uh, feedback. 
I appreciate it. But you know what? Things I'm speaking early on. Just, just you know, just grateful. You know, above all, just really grateful um, because of what the Father's doing with us in this in this late hour. I mean, you really gotta sit back and and really consider it all. You know, saints, we we've done nothing. We've done nothing at all. You know, to earn. You know, this grace, this mercy. Uh, the Father is really showing us, you know, how to walk this thing out, how to live, you know, exposing the devil that's that's in us, that's hidden, that we may not have not otherwise have seen or known about. It truly is. Um, it, it's just it's just awesome, saying it really is. And I, my heart is really I'm joyful right now. I'm just I'm just excited because y'all is, is good, and y'all be encouraged. Really be encouraged. You know, things are always like, oh, so I'm going to go ahead and read from Psalms 19. I'm starting at verse 7. This law is very important. And, and, and just to keep this on your mind and on your heart, it, it is. And, and it reads, Psalms 19, starting at verse 7. It says, The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is Sure, making why the simple. The statues of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of Yahweh are true and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great Reward. Glory to the King. Hallelujah, saints. It's so awesome. It's so wonderful that Yahweh just He didn't leave us, you know, without a without a uh, without any instructions. He didn't leave us out there, you know. He provided for us. You know, there's so much to be desired and so much to learn, even yet still about the law. But we're so thankful and we're, we're striving. You know, with the amount of knowledge that we have, we have, and we're seeking more to to comprehend even the more so. I tell you what, it, it just it, it, looking back and and seeing where we come from, not dwelling on it for long, but just looking at the state that we come from, we were lost. We were lost, saints, truly lost, without a clue of our yah without a clue of, of these laws and how righteous and how just they are. Think of the level of peace that you have now in your heart. Think of the level of peace that you have in your mind and in your home because you've changed. You didn't harden your heart. Glory to the king. But I tell you, saints, as I was saying earlier, man, you know, Satan is real. This battle is real. This war is real. We need to arm ourselves. We've been getting a lot of ammunition as of lately on how we need to fight back and war against this, this enemy. He's real. He is real. Toying around with us at all. You know, while we're sleeping and we're, we're slumbering in a state of slumber and lethargic, and he's not, he's not, he's not letting up at all. You leave yourself wide open, guess what? He's coming in, and he's taking over. So we better be on guard. We better guard our minds. We better guard our hearts. Guard and watch what goes in. Watch what we entertain and who we entertain. You know, as Pastor spoke to us on yesterday about these things. We also need to learn how how to, how to talk 
how how you you know the things that come out of our heart that spew out of our mouths. We need to learn how to sometimes just shut up and be quiet as a people because we do we do we talk too much. Okay, so we, we really we don't have any excuses. We really don't to be ignorant. Not at all, whatsoever at all. I just felt the need, Saints. I really did. I had, you know, some things to, to go over, but you know, it was just stirred up in my heart just to speak to you about some things. It really it really was. And that's just kind of my heart and it come to my mind. You know, I spewed them out. But uh but as a people, you know, we need to learn even the more so how to love one another. We really do. And I think I I, I look back at, at um I was just sitting back earlier just thinking about the love that the saints have for us, you know, at straightway. You look at a people that has given up everything and they are constantly given, constantly given at a moment's notice to just run and do whatever it is for any saint. And they are diligent with it, saints. They really are. You know, a lot of us, we think in our minds, we think that, okay, we've been listening in for, you know, a few months, a few years. We think we're ready. We think we have what it takes for community living, you know. We think we are. But we don't realize what actually goes on and what uh, is required, you know, living in the community. I see it. I'm looking at it. On the outside, looking in, just seeing the level, the level of servitude, what it what it actually takes, you know, things it takes. You really giving up all, giving up all of yourself, and not holding back. Because it'll show if you hold back. But you know, we fool ourselves when we think we're ready. So much that's still in us, so much. And we need to really work hard, really work hard, and be diligent in it. Purging that stuff out and purging that mess and garbage out. Dying out fully. Dying out to the flesh, even the more so. I know it's difficult at times. I know it is. I know the temptation. I know it. I know a lot of times you don't feel like doing a, a, a particular thing, a certain thing. I know you don't feel like getting up. I know you don't feel like warring and praying. I know you don't feel like it, but guess what? You better force yourself, creator of this whole universe. You think he wanted to come here, clothe himself in flesh, and take on sin? Do you really think he wanted to? Say we we got our priorities mixed up. We really do. And we had better get it straight, no doubt about it. I'm going to read some things right here. And I'm going to go to Titus here. Go to Titus. Not. We got bigger things we need to be worried about. Bigger issues we need to be fighting for. We need to be sitting here fighting for it. Doing things that we can do. Let the dirt be upon us. We love to look back. We love to operate. We love to do it. We're so familiar with it. We're so comfortable with it. They ain't trying, man. They really trying. It's just unfortunate. And, you know, I'm going to keep going. I want to keep praying, you know what I mean, as, as, I, as I'm going through the show. Is that crazy? All through the week, but, you know, right before the show, it was just... But 
This is crazy what we want, man. We, we definitely in a fight. And we see ourselves. We deceive ourselves when we think otherwise. So we really see, even the most on something, they really see what you see. So, Uh, and the hell with everything else, the hell with this world, the hell with trying to achieve, you know, things in this life. The hell with all of that, man. That stuff don't matter. That stuff has no type of weight, no substance, none whatsoever. I, I tell you, man, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep reading here in Titus, Titus chapter 3. Continue at verse 4. It says, but after that the kindness and the love of Yah, our Savior, toward man appeared. You hear that, right? After that the kindness and the love of Yah, our Savior, toward men appeared. Once he came into our lives, listen. Verse 5 says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly through Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his Grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. You know, saying one thing about grace, you know, and no doubt, you know, the Father's really, He really is throwing us lifelines, man. Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath. So it gets brutal. So it gets real. It gets intense. So much so that. You can hear the si- you can the silence that's in that place, in the tabernacle, in the home assembly, you know, in your house, in your living room, in your office, wherever you are, in your truck, in your you know, wherever you are, it touches it, it reaches deep down. This word does, but you got to equate that. You got to look at that as being as grace. It's mercy. That's the Father's grace. It's mercy. It endures forever. It's only to pull you out, saints, of the fire. Don't be, don't become offended. Don't become, you know, all bent out of shape because you, the, the, the devil that's working inside of you has been exposed. No, it's not time for that. That's not what's going on. This is a time for you to acknowledge it. Yes, that's me, Father. Oh, forgive me. Repent. That godly sorrow should kick in. No need to be ashamed. Yeah, I know. I know how it feels to be rebuked openly. I know how that feels. It ain't a pleasant sight. It ain't. It's not. Not a pleasant feeling. But don't run from it. Look at it as grace. Look at it as hey, this man. Look, God is trying to save me. He really, truly, he's trying to save me. Oh, man, thank you for our glory to the king. That's me. That's me all the way. You know, they used to say in the church, you know, and I used to joke around and do this when I was when I was a child. You know, they say, if you can't say amen, say ouch. And all the whole while, the preacher, the preacher, I'm up there, ouch, ouch. You know, thinking it's funny, just thinking it's a game. But nowadays, it ain't so funny. It's real now. My holla ouch a few times. That's how real this word is, and it really touches deep. It, it, it penetrates. But equate that to grace, saints. That's the grace. That's the mercy. That's the love of God. Trying to get us right. Trying to get us prepared, saints. Glory to the King. Verse 8 here. It says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm that they which have believed in Yah might be careful to maintain good to men. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to go from there to Luke. <clears throat> Luke chapter 12. And I'm going to just be reading the same. This, this is a good bit right here. Luke chapter 12. Start at verse 22. Hallelujah. One chapter, second. Luke chapter 12. And hallelujah. Bless you all. Hallelujah. That's right, Brother Mike. That's right. No doubt about it. Got to keep praying. Keep praying, man. Praying is wicked, man. He really is. He's wicked, man. And we know. we, You know what I mean? We we saints. We, we spiritual beings, you know. We definitely can feel, you know, in the hot time. You know, and... and, and Demonic forces, you know, we can feel when that junk is around. We definitely can. And uh, I tell you what, what it does more than anything, make me want to just go after it and fight against all that junk. Really does, man, because we 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 up against a real foe, a real enemy. Really, saints. You know, and all this is is saints, and just keeping up. You know what, what's going on and what we're getting ready for. We're getting ready for the feast, man. We really are. But not only that, we, we're waiting. We're getting ourselves ready. We want to be ready for the return of Messiah. And it's high time, saying that they put away all this petty foolishness and this garbage and foolish thinking and mentality. We're so messed up by this world. We are. I can't even say it's just Americans, you know? It's just the it's just the way of mankind, you know. After the fall of man, how the mind is, and how it by default it tends to go toward evil, you know, and towards disobedience. It really does. But that's what this is all about, you know. Uh, this this walk that we're in, this faith here, this ministry, to shock us, to get us right back on on path, to get us on the right course. And that's why it's such a beautiful thing. That's why it's such a joyous thing. It really is, thing. Hallelujah. I'm just with people. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Luke, chapter 12. Yeah. I'm going to start at verse 20, 22. And I'm going to be reading for a little bit. So, just hang in there. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Hmm. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and Yah feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If you then be not able to do that thing which is least. Why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not. They spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory, he was not arrayed like one of these. If then Yah so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, ye, you of little faith, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful of a doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the, of the world seek after. 
and your father knoweth that you have need of these things. And see, here's the here's the key. Here's the key right here. It says, "But seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of Yah, and all these things shall be added unto you." See, all of these things, you know, that was mentioned in the, in the beginning about you know things that not to not to worry about. These are all the things that we consume ourselves with. We're thinking about. We do. It's so foolish. We're thinking about, you know, stuff on, uh, uh, way down the line. Oh, what am I wearing, you know, for the feet? Oh, wow, I got to get my garments. I got to do this. I got to do that, you know. Oh, man, I mean, what we going to have for the for week, you know? Oh, we didn't go get the groceries. Oh, I did. Just worrying about all of that stuff. Does not even need to be that severe, you know? A lot of times, a lot of you need to just be satisfied with, with, with less anyway. See, if you get a piece of bread, maybe put some butter on it or something, but not at, for for a change. You know, eat that and be satisfied. Because you eat too much, you're too damn full, you have too much anyway. You don't want to do nothing then. You don't want to pray then. You don't want to fast. You don't want to, you know, spend time in the Word. Mind is on the wrong thing. Gut is all full. Hey, you ain't. You don't want to. You don't want to be bothered with God. You ain't worrying. You ain't thinking about Him. You content and you good, you comfortable in your own, doing your own thing. Worrying about the wrong thing. Mind is in the wrong place. Heart is in the wrong place. Still stuck in this world. Still trapped with the worries and the cares of this life. And the Messiah right here telling us these things mean nothing. You don't think he's going to take care of you? Never. I've never seen a righteous mistake, nor his seed begging grave. I know this to be true. We put too much emphasis on the wrong thing, too much focus on the wrong thing. Let me read 31 one more time. It says, but, but rather seek ye the kingdom of Yah, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's the key. Seek the kingdom. Seek out the righteousness. That's what you need to be focused on even the more. So then anything, learning how wicked your your heart really is and how deceitful it is, spending time seeking it. Think on that. And and, and, and think out ways on, in which you're going to, steps you're going to take to improve upon it. Verse 32 says, fear not. Little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old and, tre- and a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's key right there, thank you. That is key. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You know, I remember Pastor mentioning this and talking about it uh, last year, but not mistake, at the beginning uh, uh, during exhortation. And he spoke about, you know, how these people, you know, they go to church, to different churches because, you I mean, because of what's preached or what doctrine is upheld there. Or, you know, you want prosperity, you want to go to these mega churches because that's all they preach and that's all they talk about. You know, and that was one time in, in, in my journey here, my life, where I went to one of those, you know, one of those places. And I was seeking, you know, seeking to, to be something in this world. And I tell you, the whole time I was in it, man, I was, you know, just going along with it, doing it, you know. And man, but people are really seeking after prosperity. They're seeking after the things of this life, not after Yah. Uh, you know what I mean? They don't want. They don't want him. They want these the things of this life, which means nothing. And you, Israel, if you are seeking after these things. 
it's a shame unto you. Because all it's going to do is blind your eyes. Your heart is going to be changed. If, if your focus and your direction, you're going to be weighed down. Even the more so with the care of the disciples. Because you got to maintain, you got to keep up with the lifestyle, with the job, with the career, the business, or so all of these things which you, you know, you, your heart and your mind is focused and running after when it's not really truly focused on the kingdom. I don't give a damn what, what you're working at, what you're doing, what job you're at. It doesn't matter. As long as when you get that, you're able to provide for your, yourself and your family and you're able to, you know, be at peace, you have food, you have raiment, be content. We're not of this world, saints. We're not. We're all, we are only passing through. You should not be affected by, you know, small, petty things such as that, you know, worrying about status, titles, and, 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 and how people are going to look at you and think of you, you know. You know, it's a sad thing because I'll say you try to play with the mind. I was leaving from work one day, and uh, I believe it was fifth day. Just leaving, going, getting ready to go home. And all of a sudden it came to my mind, you know, how they look at you. you way out here in the country, you know. What you doing out here? Look what you're doing. Look where you work. Look at all that stuff. Look at, look. I'll say you're a liar. Damn, you're a damn liar. I, I'm not worried about none of this stuff. I'm not trying to take in the space. I'm not trying to become, you know, uh, run off in this life or uh, with people looking at me or thinking of me. Or, or, no, I ain't even let that even have a chance. The hell with it. Is this what it takes? For me to draw nigh to the Father, to get close to Him, and, and be more righteous? Well, that's what I'm going to do. That's how you got to look at this thing. All of Satan is with the thoughts of your mind, play on your mind, tell your heart, and have you running after all the wrong things. You know what you're going to find yourself doing? You go ahead and run after, you know, those things. The things of the world, of this world, the treasures of this world. You're going to find your peace. It's going to apart from you. You're going to find yourself in some really hard, tough situation. You're going to see your heart, your aim, your focus is in the wrong place. Get back to Yah. Focus on Him. And why would you even want that junk anyway? You know what comes along with that? Stay focused, Israel. Stay focused. Hallelujah. Verse 30, once again, it says, For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of Yah, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 32 says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, neither moth corrupt. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be abundant. And ye yourself like unto men when he will return for the wedding, from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. That's the key, immediately. So you're ready. So you're watching. So you're making yourself prepared now. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he cometh, shall find watching. You hear that? We need to be watching, always watching, always aware, always ready. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself, serve them. And if he shall come 
in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Glory to the King. Then Peter said unto him, Master, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And Yahweh said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward? whom his master shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he cometh, shall find so doomed. Of a truth I say unto you, Israel, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But and if that servant say in his heart, My master delayed his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servant and the maiden, and to eat and drink and to be dr- drunken, the master of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in Sunday, and will appoint him his portion. With the unbelievers And that servant Which knew his master Master's will And prepared not Himself Neither did according Will Shall be beat With many stripes Stop right there for a second That's, that's something to uh, really consider You know we, we, we are learning And we are we really are, thanks. We're learning about this law even more so. We're learning about, you know, the will of Yah. We are. And so we find ourselves, after having learned all of this, really not taking heed to it, not taking it serious. We're going to find ourselves in some serious trouble. We are. We're going to find ourselves, you know, just like Israel was when, when, when the Most High uh, came and spoke to them. The level of fear, the fright. They were not ready for him. They were not. See, we focus so much on the outer appearance, and cleaning the body, cleaning the flesh, and the clothes and the garments and stuff, but we, we miss the innermost parts. We we miss the the, the 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 internal organs. We miss all of that to clean all of that out. To clean the heart, to clean the rain, you know, and the depths thereof. We we we, we neglect clean that and to get that prepared and ready. Still and so much filthiness is still lodged deep down inside of us. Whether it be, you know, malice, whether it be, you know, any hatred, jealousy, all this envy, all these things. That's corrupting us. There's filth. There's trash or junk. How do you get this mess up all of us, thing? You really do. Verse 40, it says, But he that knew not and did com- and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few. I'll read that again. Verse 48, But he that knew not things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whos- whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they shall act the more. Let's stand here and tell you, thank you. Much, much has been given unto us, and much is being given 
unto us. I mean, we can we can we can start it at you know whatever point and and, and go. I mean, it's so much. We've been fed so much. We've seen so much. We've heard so much. Even already, no excuse for us. No excuse whatsoever. Not to perform. No excuse at all not to be diligent, servant. No excuse. We know what to do. It's our will that's in the way. It's our will that needs to be broken. The denial of ourselves that needs to be at the forefront of our mind. This is serious, things. It really is. All praise to the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to you. Verse 49 says, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straight till if it be accomplished? Hmm. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you, no, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the people, when you see a cloud, listen to this part, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway you say a shower. And so it is. You can see that clearly, can't you? You know that when that happens, huh? And verse 55 says, and when you see the south wind blow, you say, there will be heat. And it cometh to pass. You know, a lot of you right now, even to this day, study the, the heavens, you know what I mean? The skies, look at the moon, the stars, the sun, and all that. You're watching for the weather. I'm seeing you do it. I'm not saying I'm wrong with it, but I've seen you do it. And you can tell, oh, it's going to be, you know, fair weather today, or oh, it's going to be, I can smell the rain. It's cloudy. Oh, I'm keenly aware of these things in the natural sense. And verse 56 says, You hypocrite, you can discern the face of the sky. And of the earth. But how is it that you do not discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourself judge ye not what is right when thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate as thou art in the way? Give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge. And the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell you, I tell thee, thou shalt not depart sin, so thou hast paid the last, the very last, my glory, hallelujah, glory to the king, Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the broadcast that you're listening to right now. 
We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straight Way Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure that we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast, as well as the truth, coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High YAH. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Charles Dowell, Jr. And Dowell is spelled D-O-W-E-L-L. 506 Ellington Drive. Ellington is spelled E-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N. P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E 37083. Again, our mailing address is Charles Dowell, Jr., 506 Ellington Drive, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. That's 1-615-688-3025. 688-3025. You may leave a message there, and, be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to try to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. Please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives, so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom, the King is coming. Hallelujah. Let down a little back. I'm on the mic again, so you know how I'm coming in. Let me just Hallelujah. Glad y'all had joined with me tonight on this show. Y'all is good. Thank you know, for this, this, uh, letting the broadcast. It's all that y'all is doing for us. You know. He is worthy. Thank you. He truly is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to the King. Three songs, twenty five and ten. It says, All the paths, paths of Yahweh are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimony. Hallelujah. So this path leads unto them. Mercy is great, you know, truth for us. We all bless you. We all. You know, continue to say that, continue to put that out there in the atmosphere. And we are overcomers. We will overcome. You know what I did just this week, and it's, and it's amazing, you know, that it's not amazing, but, you know, it's he, yeah, um, he, he always comes through. But, you know, I was just, just this week, I was thinking, um, you know, St. Charles just really get me down a lot of, you know, Thoughts in my mind, you know what I mean? Just trying to get me down, just trying to get me out of things, you know, just. And, um. Mm-hmm. Yeah, glory to the king. That should be a little bit better. But 
yeah, anyway, you know, I got up uh, one morning from prayer, and, uh, you know, I, I said to myself, you know what? I am an overcomer. You know, I will change. I will not continue to do the same old thing. I will not. You know, I begin to speak life. You know what I mean, saints? I, I did. I honestly did. This was early on in the week. Because, you know, I, I just got comfort. You know, and praying and, and speaking and talking with the Father and just pouring it all out. And you know, I was like, you know what? I got the victory. And that's how you should be as well. You know what I mean? That's that's how you should be thinking about it. I have the victory. Glory to the King. Don't let none of this stuff, uh, thoughts, or, or, or what was going on in your life or where you at spiritually, none of that. Don't allow that to get you down. Keep pressing forward. You know what I mean? Spirit saying, give it to the swift ass, you know? We got to be endurers, man. We got to endure to the end, you know what I'm saying? Hallelujah. But what we're gearing up for, and no, that's what I wanted to tell you, you know? Uh, instead of speaking all this death and, and, you know, and all that, just it's good to start encouraging yourself. Really do it. Psych your own mind up if you have to, you know? I will overcome, I will not uh, continue doing the same old things same old wicked patterns and things. Put that out. Put that positive stuff out there in the atmosphere. Speak that. Speak life, you know, over yourself and in and, and, and your condition. And eventually, you know, things will happen. You you, you know what I mean? You'll begin to uh, change your ways, you know, with diligence, you know, with prayer, fasting, and, and being sincere in your heart. These things will happen. Glory to the king, but don't allow Satan to steal your joy. Not at all. Not a, not a little bit. You know, as a pastor was speaking on, on yesterday, and, and, you know, he was really trying to, to get us to guard our hearts, guard our minds, guard what we uh, allow out, spew out of our mouths, what we take in. And, um, you know, I started thinking about, you know, just just uh, just this week, how you got to really watch, you know, the people you talk to. Because, I mean, Satan is very funny. And, and the guy was just talking to me. And, you know, at first he tried to lure me in, try to get me, you know, like, a, you know, generalized statement or, you know, ask me a question of what I thought about this particular thing there. And, of course, I'm like, oh, yeah, I see that. I noticed that. I see that, that happening. And then he goes on, you know, to really, what he was doing was really um, showing, you know, his pretty much jealousy for someone else. And what this guy did was pretty much lay it out all, you know, cursed this other guy. Just laid it all out. Once I noticed what he was doing, I, I backed away. But the thing that I noticed uh, that I didn't do, and I got to be very careful with this, and I want you to be careful also, say, make sure that you're not in agreement with, with uh, a folk when they're speaking certain things. That's why it's really important for you to guard who you even speak to because you you might not be the one that's speaking it out of your mouth. But you sitting there listening and agreeing with them. Oh yeah, uh huh. Yeah, I, I get it. I understand. Yeah, that's right. You never know. You might be. You're just as guilty because you are in agreement with that particular person, and it's it, it, it's just like you did it as well. But just watch that. Really watch who you speak to and, and, and the things that you agree to and consent to. Watch those things. It tells us in um, Proverbs. Give me one second. I'll go to Psalms first. I'll go to Psalms 14. Um, I'm going to do Proverbs. All right. I'll go to Proverbs. Bear with me, Saint. All right, Proverbs 14 and 7. And it tells us. Proverbs 14 so it says, Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. So it tells you to get away from him. Don't entertain the junk and mess no more. You don't have to feel a certain way because you, you know, you, you, you leave and you <clears throat> you don't want to hear that mess. It's telling us right here to leave the presence of a foolish man. Get away from all of that. You perceive that they feel the 
enough of that. You don't need that. You don't need that in your spirit. You don't need that in your mind. And it tells you not even the answer to a call to this time, unless you be, become foolish, you know? So we really got to watch, saints. We don't always have to entertain uh, folk, you know, and feel like we have to be cordial. Like, you know what I mean? Because, like, I was at work, and I, I always took to myself, you know what I mean, saints? I don't believe in eating with, with others, the heathen, you know what I mean? But don't, uh, and the law, you know, it, it breaks it down while we shit. You don't have no kind of... Um, and even in letters, you know, it talks about us not having fellowship, you know, with people. So we don't have nothing in common, so we don't have nothing to sit there and talk about none of that. But I try my hardest to separate myself. There's a guy, you know, he noticed, he was like, man, you know, maybe I should tell, talk to him. So, he, you know, he purposed in his heart to talk to me. And he was like, you know, small talk. So he was like, well, I'm just trying to talk to you, you know, because, you know, I see you by yourself, nobody doesn't really say nothing to you. I said, well, that's fine with me, you know, that's that's all right. I say I'm at peace. I have peace. I made it clear. I made it known to him. Very straightforward. And I say, and, and, and furthermore, I would, I would rather keep it that way. And I, I started to speak louder at that point because there was other people around. And you know what I said? I said because to that, you, you don't want to hear what I have to say anyway. You don't want to hear it. And that was the end of that. So that was I made it known to everybody, you know. You don't have to feel like we got to be talking to them, so you don't. You know, if you listen to folk conversation, not that you want to, but just observe it. Now, people don't have nothing to talk about, nothing at all. Nothing good comes out of, out of people's mouths, nothing. It's all foolishness. It's all foul. So you guard what you allow into your, um, into your ears, saying, do that diligently. Satan's is crafty, sneaky. <laughs> might think he's asking the question, or you might even think they might even present themselves and act like they're interested in in the faith. I don't know how many people that came up to me, you know, seeking to, to know what it is. What is it that you believe? What is it that you do? It's something different about you. What is it? Masking themselves. Oh, I'm sure I've been searching for so long. I've been trying to find. You know, the thing that I'm finding out uh, amongst you know heathen is this that. These folk really don't um they don't really they don't really care about our yeah. And the thing that I'm seeing now going on more is that they don't have a problem with voicing it. I mean and they are they are voicing it. Uh, I mean, they, they don't have no 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 kind of discretion or regard at all. To letting it be known. I don't I don't believe, you know, you know, and that there is a God or I don't believe in this Jesus. I don't believe in that. You know what I mean? They don't want to hear no no truth, but yet they, they want to spew out and, and tell you what their beliefs and throw that on you. Well, I don't want to hear that. That's when you walk away from a foolish man. Because the Bible tells us that a fool, only a fool says it in his heart that there is no yah. These are some foolish people. And I have to really sit back and look at this thing, man. People don't care no more at all. Y'all see the type of people that we live, live amongst. They don't care at all. They definitely don't care about our yah. And don't think that they care about you. So in any way, shape, or form that they can try to corrupt you, they'll do it. They'll act as if they're trying to learn about this truth. They would. But you better be careful, man, who you entertain and who you befriend and who you let in. And don't be so quick to tell folk all oh, that's going on in your life. They cannot handle it. They cannot handle this. This is too extreme for them. You mean to tell me you don't have a television? You don't watch a television? What? And see that pork, man, they cannot get over it. What? You don't do pork? What? They can't handle the smallest of things. See? You need to learn now to be content by yourself. Embrace it. Use that as time, you know, you spend with the Father. Learn how to praise on your own. Learn to pray throughout the day to yourself. Learn to have fellowship with the Father on your own. You're not going to find many friends in his walk. You're not going to have outside of the saints, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to, you're not. Don't even expect it. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. But, you know, another thing um, Pastor said that, that we need to really do, 
and re- reflect on it and do that diligently, especially throughout this week. And he said, he made a statement, he said, you know, you need to renounce negative words which you have spoken about yourself and about others. Really think about that, saints. Renounce negative words that you have spoke about yourself and others. And you won't even have to treat you know, the Lord will even remind you to bring these things back to your memory. So that you can recall these things, so that you know, renounce these things. Repent of these things so from, from even letting that stuff come out of your mouth. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. We definitely need to do this. You know, I was, um, I even talked about it on this show about this guy, how, um, shows you how powerful the mind is, you know. All he wanted to do was just live to see another holiday. And he was so fear, you know, so fearful. And he believed in the, the doctors and what they said, the, the diagnosis that he gave. That he only lived for that short period of time. And found out, come to find out, when he passed on, that he didn't even have what they said. He just died in his mind, you know. It's it's, it's so powerful the mind that we have. Um, say, forward to the king. Hallelujah. But that was a good word. That was a good message um, on this pastor by one of the ones where you need to really dig deep into that one and keep, you know, keep uh, drawing from that and, and soak yourself in it because these are the things that, you know, we're dealing with in, in preparing ourselves. We're preparing ourselves, you know, for this Passover, to partake in this feast, which is no small thing. And, you know, all of the, the feast days that we have, only they are only a shadow of the thing to come. You know, if we're preparing, preparing ourselves for that, then we'll be ready for the coming of Messiah. We will be. But the focus and the, the attention, um, it really needs to be more, saints, more on cleansing ourselves. It really is. And I was reading over it again in, in uh, Chronicles and how Hezekiah, uh, he got all, you know, the priests and the Levites, he got them ready. Not only they had to cleanse themselves and purify themselves, but the temple. They had to get it ready because, I mean, it was laid dormant for a while and desolate. And so it had to be ready and clean in order for the services of the, of the temple to be um, carried out. How can we even think of going to this feast when our temple's filthy, when our temple's dirty? No way, no shape, no form. We have the record in front of us. We have the examples of people that have gone before us. You know, even coming into this faith, the very first time I ever heard pastor say that, that, you know, there's been so many people that have um, fallen away or have gone from us that were here just last year and they're no longer with us. You know, when I heard that, you know, immediately, you know, I started to look at myself like, hold up, man, this is something serious, you know. I need to really take take heed to this. Not even really contact the feet uh, that well. And I'm still learning about it. But when you think of people who've left this way, because I couldn't imagine. Let me tell you why I was so hard-hitting. I mean, I couldn't imagine people leaving this after where we come from, after me searching all that time and praying all that time. There has to be a better way. There has to be your true people somewhere. There has to be because this right is where I'm at. And so finally he showed me. But to know, you know, that people just, just nah, they, they, they couldn't get with it. There's really something to really think about, saints. We really got to take this seriously. You know, I don't know how else to really say it to you and to really try to convince you how serious it is, the time that we're in now, approaching the feast to get ourselves ready, to get ourselves prepared, to get the silky uh, uh, junk and, and mess up out of us. You know, the world, they can't understand what we're talking about right now. This is to them, they um, they, they can't get this. They can't comprehend this thing. It's not for them at all. Uh, but but for you, Israel, this is real. This is your life here that we're talking about. Hey, glory to the king. I ain't going to uh, hold you too long. I see that this... Uh, the sound is, is kind of muffled. The audio is pretty bad. 
So, so oh, I ain't gonna hold you too much and impress you too much longer with that. However, thanks. Um, I do want to just just tell you to uh, keep uh, keep our pastor in in, my, uh, in prayer. Keep him lifted up uh, throughout the week, thing. Really do that. Um, and uh, all of your your leaders here in Israel. And all of, you know, your brothers and sisters for one another, you know, keep each other lifted up. We definitely don't need it. This is definitely a war. This is war uh, battle. So um, definitely, you know, be, be uh, instrumental in prayer. And keep warring against our enemies, son. Uh, they're out there. They, they, they are not uh, falling off at all. Glory to the king. And uh, y'all be encouraged throughout throughout this uh week. And remember, saints, you know, resist the devil. Resist him, and he will flee. Um, There's a lot of ammo given on yesterday. A lot of ammo given. So go back over that and uh, enrich your, your, your hearts and soul and be encouraged and take action. Just be a people of action, a people of faith. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Because at the end of the day, saints, we win. We have the victory because of Yeshua HaMashiach, because of the blood that was shed for you, the atonement that was made for you. Keep in mind, Saints, uh, get yourself ready. Ready for this, this feast, watching, and ready and prepared for your master. Hallelujah. And I uh, love you all. Thank you for honoring me and, and uh, listening in to this particular broadcast, supporting it. And uh, thank you all for your kind words and, and encouragement. I tell you, they really are helpful and uh, need, need. I mean, they really are. They uplift my spirits. But I give you all the praise, honor, and glory. He's worthy. Uh, since we are blessed, we, we, you know, we, we hang, we're going to make it. We hang in there. You know what I mean? So just be strong. Encourage one another. Put all the petty junk and mess behind. Keep your eyes focused on the kingdom. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes focused on righteousness. Hell with all that petty stuff. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. Saints. Uh, be the Father's will. See you next week. On the same time, glory to the King. Hallelujah. Bless y'all, saints. Y'all speak. Hallelujah. Uh-oh. Look at him looking.